by tens of thousands of tons. Pipes measured in hundreds of miles. Concrete pouring out and spreading and hardening. Tanks and stills, decks and fantastic towers. An army of men, some 5,000 of them, piecing together the largest oil refinery in Europe. These were the tools they worked with. Tall derricks, massive pile drivers, devouring grabs, the stabbing flames of welding sets. And so by the summer of 1951, the time was near for the new Esso refinery at Foley to go on stream. Meanwhile, in a wooden hut a few yards up the road, just three men were building another refinery, the smallest, if you like, in Europe. A model, precise and accurate, designed from the actual drawings used in the construction of the big refinery. A job which called not for brawn and muscle, but for delicate finger work, for calculations not in miles and tons, but in inches and ounces. The scale, one thirty-second of an inch to a foot. First, the site on which the modern refinery will presently stand. Here, not acres of land to be laboriously cleared and leveled, but plywood, one-eighth of an inch thick, to be trimmed and laid across the supporting ribs beneath, pressed down, nailed down, to follow the identical curving contours of the Foley site itself. These are some of the materials which were to go into the making of the model, wire wool, split pins, perspex, cardboard, brass rods, brass wire, some of it no thicker than one sixty-fourth of an inch. Wood, beech and ash and pine. Much of it turned on a lathe, fashioned into storage tanks, stacks, refining units. Quiet and unhurried, the work of the draftsman, Norman McCain, as with geometrical exactness, he plots the layout of the miniature refinery. Here, no hiss of welding or the machine gun clatter of riveting. Only the buzz of a small circular saw, the whir of the lathe, the tap of a mallet. Soon the roadways had been marked out, and one after another, the storage tanks were put in place. The largest of the model tanks, nearly six inches across, against the 150 foot diameter of the real thing. In the actual refinery, one of the most imposing sites is the great maintenance building, 800 feet long. The model maintenance building is just over two feet long. Into it and beside it, railway tracks, spidery lengths of square brass wire. They are part of the new branch line that runs three and a half miles through the actual refinery and connects with the line linking Foley with Southampton. Believe it or not, the miniature Foley station was made out of bits of old office files, cut up and glued together. Probably the trickiest work of all went into the refining units themselves. A model maker needs almost a surgeon's hands sensitive and patient. This was early work on the two-stage crew unit, and here you see the vacuum tire being put into position. The units were shaped out of small blocks of wood, also the material called tufnel, which too can be turned on a lathe. You get an idea of the size of the refining units if you compare them with the spectacles lying there on the right side of the screen. But a better idea still when you stand under the actual catcracker, the Goliath of the new refinery at Foley. To represent grass, green flocking powder was scattered onto wet paint from an ordinary kitchen strainer. Rolled flat, and when the paint was dry, the surplus powder was brushed away. Sand also scattered over wet paint represented the gravel which covers the bare earth on which the refinery proper stands. More old office files were used to make the administration building. To give it the genuine appearance, it was covered with what model makers call brick paper. That is, of course, paper printed and colored to look like bricks. The windows are tiny squares and oblongs of perspex. Just now, we saw grass being laid. Next, 
trees and bushes to be planted, 700 of them altogether, most of them made of wire wool painted green and dusted with plucking powder again. Up goes the flare stack. That square gap in the middle is where the main refining units will be grouped together. And here they are. You can imagine the painstaking work which went into their assembly. Hours spent in fashioning and fixing the hundreds of minute bits and pieces. Brass rods reduced to less than an inch long, sheeting one hundredth of an inch thick. Wire for the endless pipes weaving around and about the refining units. Over a hundred yards of wire were tucked away into the model. Refining units and the storage tanks now gleam with aluminium paint. A half a gallon of it was used up. But a half a pint of black paint was enough to spread over the miniature roads representing tarmac and to cover many of the pipes. Comparisons between the actual refinery and the model are inviting. In the model, the stacks are seven and a third inches high. The real thing, 250 feet high. The real vacuum tower, 120 feet, and here, 3 and 7 eighths inches. The miniature regenerator, the chubby part of the catcracker, less than 2 inches in diameter against the 55 feet of the genuine article. So to the main entrance. Even a model maker might feel all thumbs dealing with these ornamental pillars. At the beginning of the driveway, the main gates. The gateway to Lilliput, this could be. Now the entire model locked together, a sort of outsized jigsaw. Fifteen feet long and twelve feet wide, it's divided into sections so that it can be more easily transported from place to place. We take one more look at the model makers. On the right, Sam Leadham, and with him, Jack Slipper, SO employees to whom, till now, model making has been merely a hobby. But they have certainly done a professional job here. The model took over a year to build, months of care and craftsmanship to achieve this handsome, finished result. But the model SO refinery isn't a toy for somebody's idle moment. It is a practical means of instruction in Britain's rapidly growing industry of oil refining. Civil of Britain celebrations, which were opened by Lord Mountbatten. After the speeches, Lord Mountbatten walked around. He stopped to congratulate the model makers and inspected the model itself. crowds were filing past, young and old, and the model was fulfilling the purpose for which it was built, teaching people something about this world of oil in which we live today.